Iowa's biggest home win, Iowa football's biggest home win since 1985. There are no asterisks on this win. All right, we're going to talk about why that is. But let's just take a moment to reflect on what just happened on Saturday evening. Iowa down 17-3 against a top four Nittany Lions team at home with an offense that has struggled basically all year. I mean, the Iowa offense has been um, good at times, but for the most part, it's been this defense that's put Iowa's offense in good field position, which continued on Saturday. Let's not take anything away from this defense. But when Brian Ferentz needed to make a big call, when Spencer Petrus needed to make a big throw, when Nico Regani needed to make a big catch and run, when Keegan Johnson needed to make a big catch and what a heck of a run, um, all those guys came through. All right. So it's time to give Iowa's offense some love. Um, there's no question they, they showed out late in the game on Saturday and did enough to win this football game. Obviously, the defense was incredible. Uh, I will say early in the game, Iowa, again, falls down 14-3, then 17-3. Um, we were wondering, would Iowa's offense have enough in its tank to catch up to a Penn State offense, which had kind of jumped on Iowa early and caught the defense off guard? I was a little bit surprised that uh, Phil Parker didn't imp- deploy more of a, a spy technique on uh, Sean Clifford. I don't know that he ever did. Um, that was a bit surprising to me. But overall... Um, you got to give this defense credit. Now, I want to address a couple of things. And, and of course, if you're an Iowa or a Penn State fan, you are aware of this uh, this rhetoric this week, this narrative that Penn State would have won without Sean Clifford. Look, I addressed it. Coach Don Patterson addressed it after our uh, or during our post game show after the game on Saturday over at Iowa at the Voice of College Football. If you haven't already checked out that post game, swing on over to Iowa at the Voice of college football on YouTube. But the bottom line here is football is a game of toughness. Football is a game just like basketball is a game where you get injured. Tennis is a game where you can get injured. Um, Soccer is certainly a game where you can sustain injury. Now, football is more physical, but you see some gruesome injuries in basically every sport. Football is a game where injuries are part of the game. That's just how it is, especially when you're active, when you're I mean, heck, I could go outside and, and, and you know run a quarter mile and sprain my ankle and be down for a week. It, it's part of being athletic. It's part of being active, whether you're playing football or not. That's the first thing. Second thing here is we don't want to question whether Sean Clifford is serious. Obviously, he was hurt enough to where he couldn't return, and it sounds like he may not be back for a while, although James Franklin doesn't like to divulge anything on the injury front, which that's his right. Um but the bottom line, it was a clean hit by Jack Campbell. Okay, it was 14 to 3, third down. 14 to 3 and third down, mind you. Jack Campbell cl- comes on a blitz that was not picked up by the Penn State um, offensive line or a backer, and uh, or, or excuse me, a back. Um, and it was a clean hit, clean shot. All right. And um, that's on Penn State for not protecting their quarterback better, right? So. Sean Clifford gets knocked out of the game. It's fourth down. They kick a field goal, make it 17-3, right? Again, he got hurt on third down. Field goal was kicked, made it 17-3, Iowa ball. Iowa comes down, puts together a beautiful drive, and scores to make it 17-10. Now, there's this narrative amongst Penn State fans this week that somehow it was 17-3 when Clifford, when Roberson came in for Clifford, which is absolutely false. I just outlined exactly how things went down. It was 17-3 when Campbell took a shot, a clean shot, at your boy, Sean Clifford, all right? And then Roberson came in because your defense couldn't stop Iowa's offense. It was 17-10. So let's let's dismiss this crap, this narrative, that somehow it was 17-3, and it was obvious, oh, Penn State was just destroying Iowa. It was a one-score game. It was a one-score game. 17-10. And your boy, Taquan Roberson, couldn't do a thing after that offensively. They score three more points from then on. Iowa wins 23-20. Again, partly because of the offense, partly because of defense. And a large credit needs to go to Torrey Taylor and the kicking game, as well as Caleb Shudak, who's been spectacular this season, who we have not talked about nearly enough on this show or really anywhere talking about Iowa football. So let's dispel that narrative that that Sean Clifford, oh, it was obvious they would have won had he stayed in. Maybe they would have. Maybe they would have. But let's stop playing this game of woulda, coulda, shoulda garbage and actually play football. You lost the game. 
There, that's all there is to it. You lost the game because you couldn't protect your quarterback, A, because your backup quarterback stunk against a great Iowa defense, and because the Iowa fans are the loudest, best fans in the country, and you had, what, six false starts in this game with Taquan Robertson, or Roberson under center? I mean, look, you lost the game because you played a really good defense, and that's okay. I mean, it's okay to lose once in a while, right? I mean, Iowa hasn't lost yet, but it's okay to lose. Penn State's still a top-10 team. There's no question about it. And again, maybe Sean Clifford playing would have made a difference, but we don't know. You know, we could have. Look, I understand quarterback is the most important position on the field. Riley Moss has been one of the more important defensive players for Iowa this year. I mean, think about how many picks and pick sixes he's had this year. He left and didn't return. And I guarantee you, if Iowa had lost this game, we wouldn't have said, oh, Riley Moss didn't get hurt, we would have won the game. No, that's not how it works. Okay. Now, would there have been a, a faction of the Iowa fan base that Petrus gone down that said, well, that made the difference? Certainly. But the overwhelming response from Penn State fans that have said this, this is the narrative, this is how it is. If Sean Clifford were playing, they would have stormed, they would have rolled Iowa. First of all, get a grip and move on, okay? You got a bye week, get Sean Clif- Clifford healthy. I am wearing the blue and white just to troll, just to troll, all right? And I'm not usually a troll, but I'm tired of hearing about it. You know, we think about fan bases, and typically, myself, living here in Ames, uh, Iowa State is sort of the uh, most annoying fan base for me, with the exception being Nebraska. Uh, Penn State is your, Penn State fans are giving Nebraska fans a run for their money. Uh, and I don't blame Iowa State fans, because I don't think Iowa State fans are delusional like Nebraska fans are, but I think Penn State, I'm starting to think Penn State fans are delusional like Nebraska.